You can take this physics practical notebook either from the publisher or Ilmi Book Depot, Urdu Bazar, Lahore, or free downloading from my website. Experiment five on page thirty-one in the practical notebook, left side page of the same experiment. We will study the relationships of simple pendulum. There are three relationships for simple pendulum. or we can say there are three laws of simple pendulum first one is the time period is independent of the amplitude the second one is time period is independent of the mass and the third one is time period is directly related to the square root of length of the simple pendulum so we will verify all these three laws now we will verify the first law of simple pendulum first of all we will find the length of the pendulum it will be fixed and we will consider 100 cm length of the pendulum then we will consider mass of the bob we will take any mass which will be fixed throughout this experiment and after that we will follow this table the first column says number of observations we will note down three observations the second column since we have to change the amplitude so we will fill the different values of amplitude in the second column and then time for 20 vibrations will be found out we will find that time twice and then we will find the mean value and from that we will find the time period for the simple pendulum okay students now we will start our experiment the pendulum is already set in oscillations we will consider an amplitude of 6 Centimeter, and we will start counting for twenty oscillations. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, and so on up to twenty vibrations. And then we will note down the time for twenty oscillations. and we will note down this value in the table of observations and calculations the observations that we have taken have been noted down in the table of observations and calculations the amplitude was 6 cm and the time for 20 vibrations for the first time was 36.9 seconds for the second time it was 37.0 seconds then we computed the mean value that was 36.95 seconds and in the end we have calculated the time period of the simple pendulum by dividing the mean time by the number of oscillations that is 20 and the time period was 1.85 seconds similarly we can note down two more observations for different amplitudes and we will fill out this table of observations and calculations similarly we can consider different amplitude this time we consider amplitude of 8 cm and using the same procedure we can calculate the time period of the pendulum that was again 1.85 seconds for the third observation the amplitude was considered 10 cm and following the same procedure we computed the time period of the simple pendulum which was once again 1.85 seconds so from this table of observations and calculations we can see when the amplitude is changed the time period remains unchanged from which we can conclude that the time period of simple pendulum is independent of
the amplitude of the pendulum. Okay, students. Now we will verify the second law of simple pendulum. That is, the time period of the simple pendulum is independent of the mass of the ball or the density of the ball. Okay, in this second part, the length of the pendulum will be kept constant, that is 100 cm and the amplitude will remain the same throughout the observations, that is 6 cm. We will follow the table of observations and calculations. As it says, the first column, number of observations, we will note down 3 different observations with 3 different masses. The second column, we will note down the mass of the ball. The third column says time for 20 vibrations. So we will note down the time for 20 vibrations the first time, the second time and then we will compute the mean value. In the end we will find the time period of the simple pendulum by dividing the mean time by the number of oscillations that is 20. Okay students, just like as we have done in part 1 of this experiment, we will set the pendulum in vibration and we will note down the time for 20 vibrations and we will fill out this value in the table of observations and calculations. We have performed the first observation with this bob we can replace this bob with a bob of different mass just like this and for the third one we will use another bob of different mass and we will note down the time for 20 vibrations and we will fill out the table of observations and calculations okay with the mass of bob 75 centimeter we have observed that the time for 20 vibrations was 37.0 seconds for the first time. The second time it was 37.1 seconds. And then using these two values, we computed the mean value that was 37.05 seconds. From this observation, we have calculated the time period of the simple pendulum by dividing the mean value by the number of oscillations 20 the time period was 1.85 seconds similarly we can use different box the one with 70 gram mass finding the time for 20 vibrations finding mean value and then Calculating the time period, we observed that it was the same 1.85 seconds as it was in case of the ball with mass 75 gram. Then for the third observation, we changed the mass of the ball once again. We considered the ball with 65 gram mass. And following the same procedure, we computed the time period of the pendulum. It was once again 1.85 seconds. So from these observations, we can see that the time period remains the same when the mass of the ball was changed. So we conclude that the time period is independent of the mass of the ball.